Say goodbye to driving your Toyota Tacoma. You know, I was thinking, Toyota's coming out with the hybrids here towards the end of this year, hopefully. You know, the electric and gas-powered engine, and there's rumor of more electric vehicles. You know Toyota wants to go electric across the board, right? So I was thinking, you know, what goes right along with electric is self-driving vehicles. And I thought, you know, what are the benefits of self-driving vehicles? Are there any, and do we care? So I went out to the web, and I did a little search on what are the benefits, scoured all this different information, and I came up with nine points, nine reasons why it said that self-driving vehicles, in this case, maybe the Tacoma down the road, is a better option. Number one, increased road safety. We'd all like to have increased road safety, right? They say it will reduce accidents, injuries, and fatalities, and that human error causes 94% of all the accidents out there. It's kind of hard to argue that. I mean, if you're out driving around, it's inevitable that somebody's gonna do something wrong. Either they turn in front of you, or they stop too quick, or too slow, drive too fast. You know, whatever it is, you're gonna see it. I see it all the time. Ever see those street racers out on the freeways? Won't be able to do that with a automatic driving car. Number two, reduced cost to society. Reduced fuel costs due to efficiency, reduced accident expenses, reduced medical bills. All of that is certainly true. I mean, if you've got a big brain somewhere, you know, an electric auto driving brain, determining what the best speeds are, what the best routes are, which we'll get into in a minute, you're going to save some gas. And if it's monitoring everything and it's doing it efficiently and correctly, you're not going to have accidents and things, which means you're not going to have medical bills, right? Number three, decreased traffic and more efficient roadways. Vehicles will communicate with each other uh, to adjust speeds and routes. Yeah, if it works right. Ever try to follow a, a Google uh, direction thing or one of those self-directing uh, things on your phone, Google Maps, whatever? and it takes you to a, a wrong road or a ditch or a mountain. I saw recently there was some older person who was following Google Maps, I think it was, and they ended up at the top of a great big pile of dirt, uh, which is where Google Maps took them. Obviously, that's not the norm. You only hear about the bad things. I've used Google Maps or whatever many times myself, driven across the country, and had no issues. But nonetheless, there probably will be problems. Number four, will allow those that can't drive to travel easier and not put others at risk. You know what happens out there. You know people are driving around that shouldn't be. Maybe they pass out. Maybe they get dizzy. Maybe they are drunk. Maybe they're on drugs. Who knows? It could be a number of things. Well, you won't have that problem with all self-driving vehicles, right? I mean, you're going to get in. Hopefully, you're coherent enough to put the route in you want or speak it. And then the car is going to take you there itself. That means there's no more risk, or very little hopefully, of them crashing into you or anybody else. Plus, they'll actually, the ones that do abide by the law and don't drive, will be able to get places themselves because they'll be able to own self-driving vehicles and not have to depend on public transportation or anything else. Number five, it's better for the environment. All self-driving vehicles will be electric. You'll have reduced carbon emissions. Now, they didn't go on to mention anything about what batteries cause, the manufacturer of them, and more importantly, probably the disposal of them. You know, where do all these nasty batteries go when they run down and you can't use them anymore? They go to landfills, and then they seep all that nasty stuff into the soil, right? I mean, think about how much there would be, the volume, if every car in the U.S., every car and truck was battery operated or electric. Not to mention, we really don't have the infrastructure to get there yet anyway. I've talked about that on the channel before, but for sake of argument, let's say we got there. You still have that battery disposal problem, right? And then, of course, the generation of electricity. Eh, they don't talk about that. Uh, number six, reduced fuel costs by four to 10%. This says that US drivers waste 3.1 billion, B, 
billion gallons of gas annually due to inefficiency. Inefficiency meaning stopping on the gas too hard, speeding up, higher than you're supposed to be driving. I mean, picture this, there'll be a freeway and everybody will be traveling at 65 miles an hour or 70 or 75 or whatever it is where you are. Nobody will be able to speed and hopefully nobody will be able to go slower because that's gonna create that accident problem again, right? But 3.1 billion gallons of gas, you know, I hope that just half of the people go to all electric so that there's still gas for me to drive my gas powered vehicle, right? Number seven increased lane capacity by up to 500%. That means you'll be able to fit more cars at the same time on the lanes that we currently have. They say that that will result in a 20% faster travel speed. That's because you're not going to have all the cars all bunched up. You ever go down the road and for some reason in the fast lane you've got three, four, five cars all going very slow. It's very irritating. Not going to have that anymore. All of the lanes will be filled with cars and they'll all be traveling at the right speed because the computer is going to control all that and all the cars are going to be able to talk to each other so that they don't bounce into each other, right? It makes sense if it works. Number eight, reduced travel time. Commuters will save 80 billion hours over a lifetime. That's a lot of hours. Now, that's as a whole, right? I mean, I'm not going to save 80 billion hours over my lifetime if I drove a self-driving vehicle, but as a whole, 80 billion hours. What are you going to do with all that extra time? Well, heck, you could work another job. I don't know. They say that will save up to $1.3 trillion. That's a heck of a lot of money, right? Now, again, it's as a whole. It's not like you're going to have an extra $1.3 trillion. Wouldn't that be nice though? You could buy a fleet of self-driving cars and just switch them out when the batteries go down. You don't even have to screw around charging them, right? Number nine, improved traffic safety for the vulnerable. The vulnerable being basically anybody who's around a car that's not in it. You know, pedestrians, cyclists, anybody or anything. Think of all the poor animals that would be saved. What would happen if a squirrel runs across the road and you're in your self-driving car? It's going to slam on the brakes. You better have your seatbelt on because you'll go through the windshield, right? But that squirrel will be okay. Um, it's a good idea. I mean, you know, cars should not be running into pedestrians, uh, nor should they be running over cyclists. So anything that can uh, wake people up, I guess, sometimes you just don't see them. I don't know. Or they do things that they really shouldn't be doing. So anyway, those are just nine uh, benefits, I guess, according to the web as to why we should welcome all self-driving vehicles and I think the Toyota Tacoma is going to go that way someday itself hopefully many many years beyond my time we shall see because I don't want to say goodbye to driving the Toyota Tacoma leave a comment let me know do these reasons convince you are you now on the on the train are you willing to dump your gas-powered Toyota Tacoma get an electric that's self-driving I'd be curious to know thanks for watching Stay safe out there.